y'all, I'm April. And I'm Caroline. And this is your bloody happy hour. Caroline, are you ready for this? This is your newest guilty pleasure. It's the bloodiest part of your week. Did we say something about it also being happy hour? Showed in. Because we're about to be sipping on some murder. Bloody happy hour. Hey, bloodies. This is April. It's Caroline. Here we are. Tuesday, turn up Tuesday. We want to thank you, listeners. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Bloody Happy Hour. If you haven't done so yet, press the subscribe button. What else should they do? Um, You should rate. You should review. And you should also go to manscaped.com <laughs> and get your performance package 4.0 and keep your balls super clean and super beautiful. Yes. Enter the code BHH. You get 20% off and free shipping wherever you are. Yep. Zimbabwe for shipping. Yep. Mozambique. Brazil. Brazil. Hmm. Anywhere for shipping. Okay. So, Caroline, I'm sure she's got some news for us today. What is in the news? Okay. So, today we have our quickie, as you know. We do for, yeah, any new listeners out there, we do quickies on Tuesdays. And then on Thursdays, we go in depth in our full story. So we got a, f- we got a little bit of a Casey Anthony update. Ooh. We got um, uh, the Delphi. Um, yeah. Delphi, Richard Allen, he wrote a letter. So we're going to read that little letter. Um, we have Taylor Parker uh, to talk about her sentencing. And if you don't know who Taylor Parker is, you weren't at the you live show. You were not at the live show. So, sorry about your luck. And then we're going to finish it off with a little bit of the Ashley Bush story. So, it's kind of a good good Let's stuff go. here. Yeah. So, Casey Anthony, um, top mom, Casey Anthony, T.O.T., um, she's breaking her silence. Are you okay. excited? Are you excited? I'm a little bit because I'm ready. She pisses me off so bad. I had to insert eye roll here because <laughs> I was <laughs> real pissed. <laughs> I roll, y'all. This is her first televised interview. It's going to be a three-part series called Where the Truth Lies. It's premiering November 29th on Peacock, which if you're... I got it! Well, about half the people on Twitter are... Delete Peacock. Delete. Really? Cancel. Cancel. They're pissed that they're giving her all this air... That they're giving her airtime and that, they're, that she's basically getting paid for it. Oh, they're pissed because they don't want her to, to benefit benefit from the death of her murderer, who we all know that she did kill her daughter, but she was found not guilty. So what are you going to do? This is how it's always harder for women because we didn't get pissed that Kemper got paid for reading books. We didn't get pissed that Ted Bundy. Well, a lot of people are comparing it to the Dahmer series that just came out. Uh huh. But I say only some people at were least about that. Well, com- comparing, they're like saying what you were saying. Yeah. Why are you mad about Casey Anthony getting to talk about her stuff whenever Jeffrey Dahmer was just talking about all his stuff? I'm like, well, he was admitting it, and yeah. he was talking about how bad it was, but uh-huh. how he didn't know how to control it, but he was, like, fully up front with it. She, It's just how but she But Ted Bundy across. still lied about it, and we love him. Yeah. Probably well, I guess and he killed a thousand people. I th- I guess it's I'm not taking up for Casey. She's a bitch. No, I think it's because she was found not guilty. It's same with OJ uh, Simpson. People yeah. would be pissed because he's found not guilty, mm-hmm. and we know he did it. Mm-hmm. And so if he's having an interview, you know, people are like, you know, he made tons of money. But you know, yeah, yeah. But so they have apparently, uh, Peacock was given like. The, like they were, they are able to ask any questions they want and do anything they want, like to her. Which, okay. if if you have listened to our other episodes where we did Casey Anthony, we uh-huh. covered Casey Anthony. She had wanted to do a book and she wanted to have a, a series of stuff, but she wanted it her way, and she never would do anything because they were wanting to do it their way and mm-hmm. they were want to ask their certain questions and she wouldn't allow it. So that's why she hasn't had anything up until now. Okay, because so she's So I very much doubt that it's going to go
go all Peacock's way. I I find it hard to believe that she's get, Casey Anthony is giving up all of her yeah. control to get them to ask all yeah. these questions. So, in case you don't know, let me give you a little recap, Casey Anthony. In 2008... Uh, her daughter disappeared, two-year-old Kaylee. This was like international news. This was a huge case. Um, in December of that same year, she was found in a wooded area near her family home. And then Casey was charged with her murder. And then 2011 was the trial. It was a circus. And she was acquitted um, on the charges of murder. And July 5th, that was on July 5th, 2011. Um she was convicted of, like, lying to police, and, you know, she lied, 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 lied mm-hmm. all throughout. She Compulsive. lied about where she worked. She lied about where she was. She Just everything. She lied, made up these fake people, this nanny. She drugged her with Xanax. She lied about that. I mean, all lies, yeah. lies, lies. Yeah. Um, so she had, Casey Anthony had previously spoken out. She did an interview in 2017, and this is when she talked about how the public didn't like her. This was an off-camera interview, um, and she was basically like, I know the public doesn't give a shit about me, and they never will, and just based off what they know about me, and, you know, I just know that I'd, I didn't do what I was accused of. Okay, great. Mm-hmm. She also said that um, during during her Like, she had attempted to maintain the social life, like, throughout this whole time. But, you know, it's just, she's kind of been trying to, like, be pretty guarded. But she would still go out to bars and still have fun. You know, guys would still hit on her. She had to make sure to let everybody know guys would still hit on her. They were still attracted to her. They were buying her drinks often. Guys would be the ones to not recognize her. A hundred percent. So, she then made headlines because she got into a bar fight. I remember that. Somebody poured her... um, Oh, a drink on her. yeah, somebody poured a drink on her, and they got into this verbal fight, and cops are called, and whatever. So she's not, you know, whatever. Then, like, one of her friends or a source close to her was like, they're always doing, every few months, they're doing a different story about her, and the media is going to say what they want to say, but... She feels like now is the time for her to set the record straight, and she's going to say what she needs to say, and she just wants her voice to be heard. What is this, 12 years later? 13, 13. 2011 is when she was... Convicted. Exonerated. Exonerated? Exonerated. Exonerated. I learn words every day. (laughs) So what's your math? 11 years? Oh, I don't know. 12 years. 12 years. So, Nancy Grace is not happy about it. Of course. My bitch. <laughs> She's not happy about it. So, there you go. Um, I will definitely watch it just to see. And she's a compulsive liar. And she's never going to be able to cover that up. So, it's all it is is going to have her harassed again. As much as she was hated in the beginning, she's about to bring all that. Oh. For sure. She's not going to create any doubt behind this because she did it. She did it. She's not going to convince anybody otherwise. Um, I don't have Peacock, so you can use my login. Okay. I forgot why I had it. I think I had it for Yellowstone or something. Oh, probably. Okay. Story number two. Richard Allen. So this is the guy who is um, being, who's accused of the Delphi murders. Yes. Abby, the one we talked about last week. Mm -hmm. So he is... Uh, I also heard a jail call, like somebody who's in that same jail that he's in called somebody like a relative and they're just having a conversation, but they were talking about, they're like him in a cell, like, oh, he's in a cell. He's sleeping all the time. No, everybody's like talking shit to him as they go by. Mm -hmm. Like, fuck you. Like all this stuff. That would be me in a jail and somebody comes in and I'd. Call up guess yes. who is in the yes. cell next to me. I have to send it to you because it's it's pretty interesting. Okay, so he, Richard Allen, wrote a letter to the court, and this is what his letter said. Uh, in the cause listed above, I, Richard M. Allen, hereby throw myself at the mercy of the court. I am begging to be provided with legal assistance in a public defender or whatever help is suitable. 
At my initial hearing on October 28th, 2022, I asked to find representation for myself. However, at the time, I had no clue how expensive it would be just to talk to someone. I also did not realize what my wife and I's immediate financial situation was going to be. He said eyes. He he? said eyes. (laughs) We have... We have both been forced to immediately abandon employment, myself due to incarceration, and my wife due to her uh, personal safety. She has had to abandon our house for her own safety. Her job? Yeah. What little little reserve, I think? I'm re- it's handwritten, so. Yeah, it's bad. Uh, what little reserve there is will fail to even maintain the original residence Again, I throw myself at the mercy of the court. Um, Please provide me with whatever assistance you may. Thank you for your time in this most urgent matter. Sincerely, Richard M. Allen. Which, I'm so confused. Don't you go to your, like, hearing and say, I need need to be appointed a court? Yeah, but at the first one, he said that he said that he was going to appoint his own attorney. He said he was going to hire an attorney. That's what it said at the beginning, right? And then so now he's like, oh, wait, I can't pay for it. Yeah, like did he just think it was like like, going to be like $100? It was like (laughs) $100,000, I assume. Because you have to like like retainer fees and like all this other stuff. Yeah. Maybe he thought that somebody would want this case so bad that they would do it pro bono, like just for the publicity. Oh. But that's the thing, like, I wouldn't they have to go do this case in another town? Like, to have oh, the trial? Oh, I'm sure they would have to. I don't know. But that's the latest. It's been some top news, so. I think we're supposed to find out in, like, a week or two if he gets, if the uh, probable cause documents are released. Those are the documents that were not released, that they were sealed, mm-hmm. and the public couldn't see them. I wasn't sure what it was called. And he's been recently moved to protective custody because he's yes, obviously because in danger. Yes, it's, because it's, yeah, the, the threat is the, I don't know how the public would get to him. He's in a jail, but that's what they're saying, like, they're wor- because of the public. And now a word from our sponsors. Hi, I'm Hank. You might remember me from a show called King of the Hill. Check out Ma, a King of the Hill rewatch podcast. These boys ain't right, but they are funny. Find the Ma podcast anywhere you get your podcasts or at roguemedianetwork.com. I tell you what. Hi, this is Sarah. And I'm Carter. And this is Some of Our Thoughts. We're two Southern sommeliers, and we want to share everything we love and know about wine. We started hanging out during quarantine and cooking and drinking and listening to music, and we just thought this would be a great way to bring everything we know to you guys. We will make wine knowledge and food pairings easy and approachable. So put on your favorite vinyl, grab your favorite glass of wine, tune into our show, and let's have some fun. Wine Wine and vinyl. vinyl. (laughs) So check us out on roguemedianetwork.com or wherever you get your favorite podcast. We'll be talking about a lot. (laughs) 911, what's your emergency? Do you hear that? It's coming from the house. It's coming from inside the house? Uh, Do you mean, could it be? The The Bolter House. New from Rogue Media, two haunted hotties talking about haunted places. Every episode, we dive deep into the darkest places and give you a bit of history. We're getting spooky in all the right places. You've gobbled your last ghoul. Follow along for the craziest and spookiest stories with Debbie's Dark Tourism. The Stanley Hotel, Winchester House, The Alamo, Hotel Monte Vista, and more spooky places. 
Find us at the underscore Poltergals. P-O-L-T-E-R-G-A-L-S. Look over your shoulder. It's us, the Poltergals. Wherever you consume the podcast, you can find us there. Welcome to One Star Rewind, a new podcast about those dreaded one star reviews that every business owner hates to receive, but yet every customer loves to read. During this podcast, we will peel back that one star review to better understand how it happened, when it happened, and what the business owner is doing after receiving that one star review. This podcast will be about love, hate, and laughter. On One Star Rewind, we will meet with real business owners who will tell their stories and how they do rely on reviews for their business. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, or download us at roguemedianetwork.com. Please subscribe, but only rate and review for not a one-star review. Join us each time for a new review and a new story. So that's that one. And then we have uh, Taylor Parker. So Taylor Parker, um, she was convicted last month of murdering and kidnapping um, Reagan Simmons Hancock and Reagan's unborn baby, Braxlyn Sage. That is a pretty name. Never yes. heard Braxton. So so Taylor Parker, she's the one that I talked about at the live show. She have faked her pregnancy. She became friends with Reagan or they became friends on mainly on like Facebook. Then she ended up going over she wasn't really pregnant. She went to Reagan, ended up cutting out the baby mm. and wanting to steal the baby, keep it as her own. She stuffed the placenta down her pants. That is like what I couldn't get over and drove with the baby. So when the cops pulled her over, they would think she's the one that had the baby. Yes. She's got a bloody placenta. So this is a little recap. Hancock. So Reagan's mother is who found her. Oh, yes. So she Reagan was stabbed how many times? 90 something times? She was like hit with. Like, oh, uh, yeah, about a hundred times with like a uh, crowbar or a hammer Mm. in the head. Um, The mom found the body at the home. Her three year old. So Reagan had a three year old. She was pregnant and she had this three year old. The baby was, that three year old kid was there. Later that morning, like uh, this Taylor Parker is saying that she gave birth, but she was pulled over. Like you said, she was pulled over for speeding and driving crazy. And. She had this baby and this placenta in the car with her. So then they're taken to the hospital (laughs) and they try to keep this baby alive. The baby dies. And then, yeah, they find out that she faked it all. She faked ultrasounds. She faked a gender reveal party. She did all this just to keep her boyfriend. Yeah, she took Took baby pictures. pictures. She did all of this because she she didn't want her boyfriend to leave her. Oh, God. Okay. Not even because she wanted a kid, y'all. She didn't really even want the kid. Yeah. She didn't want the boyfriend to leave her. She's had a hysterectomy, right? Yes. She didn't tell the boyfriend. Okay. So she, so we had the trial. She gets convicted. She's found guilty. She's getting death row. Okay. But let yes. me tell you a little bit about what I found out when I just looked into what, how the trial went. Okay. This bitch tried to fabricate the whole... She goes to prison. I don't know if she wrote... She wrote two letters. She wrote a 10-page letter and a 13-page letter. Wow. She was trying to pin it on an inmate. In the prison. In the prison. (laughs) So it was basically like somebody was about to be released. What she was trying to do was say that that person had written this confession letter 
left it in the cell and they and she found it and she was trying to get it turned over to the authorities confessing for the murder that she had already confessed to that now that well, she didn't confess to it but she was the, the one murder that she was convicted accused of, of. Okay. yes yes wonder was the person in jail when the murder happened oh. okay but not a good idea i'm just gonna go through a little bit of what these letters were saying okay she okay and then oh the victim i got a little bit of victim impact statement on the tape okay so the letters contain details about the murder that only the perpetrator could have known, including injuries to Reagan, and that these injuries were discovered during her autopsy. And they also have weapons that investigators u- were believed to were used to um, like bludgeon Reagan. And both of them were written in the perspective of the real killer. So she pulled a Liz. This is this is beyond she. I, I read she is a, like she's the worst inmate. She's the worst person. She's one of we say that every, no, every I think episode. she might be the worst because not only has she done all this in prison, she's horrible. She is like she's having seizures. She's sick all the time. She has to go to the hospital. She has to go to like to the medical place, and then she claims that they're not giving her the right treatment, and they're they're not providing her with the medication medication she needs. And so then she gets the nurses in trouble, and then she gets other inmates in trouble, and then she sneaks all this shit into her cell, and like mm. she's making people fight. She's like awful, bad. awful. And <laughs> so in these letters, it's describing how she's like beaten, like. The real killer is repeatedly striking Ray- Reagan over the head with this crowbar. And it talks about information about other items that were like evidence that was missing from the scene. So what she's saying is her story is that a gang. Okay. Um, that. Yeah. She was targeted. Taylor Parker was targeted because she had an inheritance because uh, she was like an heir to some oil and gas money. Mm -hmm. And so that's why these people targeted her. And they had a car that was like they a car broke down on the side of the road and they got her to stop. And then that's when they knocked her out, drugged her put her in the back of the car, drove her over to Reagan's house. They beat up Reagan. Taylor comes to and gets out of her drug fate, like fog. Mm-hmm. She wakes up. She slowly like comes to and is like, um, Reagan, what's, what's going on? What's happening? And she slowly gets up and she's like being the hero and is like trying to save her and goes over and asks, who did this to you? And Reagan is like, them. This is all in the letter. <laughs> oh, God. And she. So why did she take the baby? <clears throat> okay. She's because going to the hospital, Caroline, don't you know? Because the people who were beating up Reagan wanted the baby. And so they started to take, they started to cut the baby out. And then Taylor Parker was there to save her. And then, oh my God, Reagan begged Parker to take the baby out of her dying body to save her. This is wow. This is a movie. Word was that, okay, yeah, the girl had, I mean, in in this letter, she also tries to be like a gay, like it's like, She's being these gangsters. Oh, this is a quote. Word was the girl had money originally, but then the old boy got himself into some money on the land. Doughboy, who they were rolling in the deal, caught word in December from a crew member who happened to be an old lady who worked in the same place, overheard a man deliver a check to that bitch for over a million. She confirmed that she called her old man to the office. Girl got a record, recorded, sent it to the doughboy. He called it a deal. I mean, I she's trying to sound like a thug. Yes, that's <laughs> what they said. So then it goes on and it goes on and it goes on. So later it talks about how this is also from the letter. She was fast, but my swing was faster as the first hit came down on the back of her skull. 
the letter says as it's describing the blood running mm-hmm. down Reagan's face before mm-hmm. detailing what the prosecutor believes that it was the real details of what Parker was recalling uh-huh. when she, like while she's doing the murder and it's like he's basically like now now this sounds like she's just reliving it as she's writing this fake letter and they also described a scenario where the killer looked on as Reagan supposedly begged Parker to take the baby, ultimately grabbing the scalpel to finish cutting herself open mm. when Parker hesitated. So she's saying, well, she Reagan started grabbed it. it and finished it because I couldn't do it. <laughs> then the letters also said that the three-year-old saw it all. Mm. And they said that the little girl entered the room and she's like, then I was ready to swing again. And I heard a small voice say, mom, mom. And then it, and then she looked at the baby and was like, go back into the other room and call daddy and tell her that daddy, tell her that mommy and aunt Taylor are in trouble. (laughs) This is all written. Y'all, this is all written in the letter. Also, yeah, this was all p- supposedly part of a gang, gang initiation. So she's assuming this other girl that's about to get out is in a gang? or is she- No, she's making all this up, and she's writing it in a letter, seals the letter, and the lady gets released. Some, some meth head, literally meth head person gets released, and then she, and she like talks to this other inmate and is like, oh, my gosh, I found this letter in her cell. <laughs> Like, give this, whenever you go over to do your whatever phone call, give this to the authority, or I don't know what these people are called. Yeah. Uh, P.O., what's the P.O.? Yeah. Whatever. But she's, she's wrote two, di- she, she tried it twice. <laughs> she wrote two different letters in, yeah. Also, in this letter, it talks about how in the placenta, where's, like, a cr- like pressed on like the press on nails there was like like fingernails but that they were from Reagan like oh. she was trying to keep her own placenta in oh. y'all this bitch that's she just earned the worst award the worst the worst the worst the worst there's so much more i found so much more of it but that's um one final thing is the, uh, the victim statement. So the mom, this is from Reagan's mom. She just, she said, my baby was still alive fighting for her baby mm. when you tore her open and ripped her baby from her stomach in front of her baby girl, the little three-year-old. You're, you're an evil piece of flesh demon. You watched her die. You did not care about Braxlin either. Spending so much time making sure you would not get caught. And then Taylor Parker apparently starts crying, whatever. We all know you think this is about you. This is not about you. It's about Reagan and Braxlin. I will continue to remind people, the world, how evil you are for the rest of your life, however short that may be. But only if I hear the mention of your name. Otherwise, I will not speak of you. Mm. Um, yeah. You took their breaths, but you will not get their beauty and their light will shine forever. The judge then said, had nothing to say. To her, which typically they will like say yeah. something that's like really harsh, but all the judge could say was, "You can r- remove her and take her to death row." Mm. And death row. She's in death row, and she is officially in Gatesville. What? Do we need to write <laughs> down the in the Mountain View unit? Wow! 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 The jury took 90 minutes to get a verdict. This was a seven-week trial. And took 90 minutes. 90 minutes. There's nothing to talk about. Besides, it must have been life or death. Now, this is Texas, so we knew what was going to happen. Oh, and she deserves every bit of it. But to, I mean, that is like what Liz Goliar did. Remember, she wrote her own confession of the murder she did, but masked it as, oh, Amy, you know, the ex-wife or whatever. That's what she's doing. But you're blaming on a meth addict. Choose a better uh, criminal because meth addicts I are I think on capable. her second letter, she chose somebody else. Now, th- I just I just found out about these letters today when I was looking through it. And I was like, oh, my gosh. 
Because I was like, what? I didn't understand. But yeah, it, at the point that you go and you cut um, somebody's baby out of their stomach, mm-hmm. something yeah. right. Listen, if you want a kid that bad, wait till they're born and kidnap it. But you killed the mom and the baby and everybody loses. Even yeah. you. You don't even get a baby for a minute. Yeah, like, tr- let's not kill. Don't kidnap let's not, a kid, but I'm yeah. just saying, that's a better alternative. Yeah, I would rather you kidnap a kid than cut it out of their stomach. And I would rather you divorce your spouse than plot with your affair lover or, like, have a have an affair. Oh, yeah. And don't kill, the, kill them. Yeah, yeah. I feel like that's simple math. It's... I'm I'm good at that. I'm good at math, and it's simple. <laughs> All right, y'all. There's your news for the week. Um, Caroline is so good about... If you're not on our Instagram, go and follow us now because Caroline keeps these articles going. And if there's an update in between our next episode when we record, guess what? You can see that on our Instagram page. I put Sometimes it on the stories. Our Facebook page. Um, I don't... And I do know they disappear in 24 hours, yeah. so... Y'all, There's your y'all, quickie. Y'all. Hope it was quick enough. If it wasn't, that was full of juice and tea, and it's hope it spilled all over you. <laughs> You're welcome. welcome. We will see y'all Thursday for another episode of Bloody Happy Hour. Don't forget to stay aware, stay alive, and always be DTF, but don't go cut anybody's baby out. Don't do it. Just kidnap it. Bye, y'all. Bye. This has been a Rogue Media Podcast. Frozen, Frozen, Heroes, gonna tell you about Frozen, Frozen, Heroes, gonna tell you about... Hey, I'm Zach. And I'm Mike. And we have a fantastic new podcast to tell you about. Bros, Foes, and Heroes. It's the two of us looking into the world of comics, breaking down some characters that you may have never heard of, and some that are just absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, so Zach comes up with a character each time, and uh, I go into it just completely blind. I don't know who this person is or what their abilities are or anything, and and basically I guess we kind of go over their origin story. And just some of the ridiculous stuff that maybe, especially Golden Age stuff. Oh, Golden yeah. Age stuff is always the best. And we will make sure to highlight all of the shenanigans and just absolute weirdness yeah. of everything. Yeah, that's right. So subscribe today and uh, follow us on Instagram at Bros Bros Heroes. And if you don't, I know where you live. Not really, but please subscribe. <laughs> Bros and Bros and Heroes. Gonna tell you about pros and foes and heroes. Gonna tell you about. Hi, I'm Hank. You might remember me from a show called King of the Hill. Check out Ma, a King of the Hill rewatch podcast. These boys ain't right, but they are funny. Find the Ma podcast anywhere you get your podcasts or at roguemedianetwork.com. I tell you what. <laughs> <sighs>